And I'm not talking about tickets and stuff because, you know, that's not really a hidden cost. It's just kind of a given. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Oh, it sounds so good. Good morning, YouTube. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to today's video. So today I am super excited to get started with. Uh, so currently we have a driver coming to pick us up so we can finally go get Ace out of the shop. Uh, so we figured out what was wrong with it. If you missed last video where I discussed what was wrong with it. We are back in the Mustang. I know it's kind of random. We did just drop the car off. Uh, we were able to pick it up because the parts aren't in yet, but we did find out what's wrong with it. Uh, yeah, so the oil pan is cracked. No idea how that happens. I guess the oil pan is plastic. Uh, that's what I've been told, but that still doesn't make any sense. Why would an oil pan be plastic? Thanks, Ford. Uh, so if anybody has any ideas, please let me know in the comments below. But we're going to go get our stuff ready and head on out. Awesome. Couple signatures from you. The top one here is the warranty copy, so ignore the total here. Okay. Only charge is the tire rotation oil change got done with the oil pan. You guys have a good afternoon. You too. <laughs> we should make it about a tenth of a mile. <laughs> Okay, so we just came back with the Mustang. We're gonna get everything set with getting it winterized. I think we might do that in today's video. If not, it'll be in the next one. In the meantime, uh, we're going to get our bike gear on because for some reason it is still 65 degrees and it's January and it, I, I, I don't know. I'm kidding. <laughs> if I threw my helmet, that would be a major problem. Aha. Uh -huh. I need my keys. Mother f I hate these keys. The key setup on the bike is really annoying. That is one thing that drives me nuts. Pop this into neutral and start it up. Ah. Let's go. Before I fumigate the house, roll the bike up a little bit further. Let the bike warm up for a second. That one bar. All right, so we're gonna get out of the community and the next clip is where I'll talk about the true cost of owning a motorcycle. As you can probably tell, I'm having way too much fun already and we're still haven't even left my neighborhood. I don't like cutting people off because you know, gotta be responsible. Shifts. The lady's back windshield says oral or anal. Nice. Nice. Oh, I just love the clutchless shifting on this thing. It's just. Oh, it's so minty. Oh my god. It is so nice out. It doesn't make any sense. It's January. Why am I on a motorcycle and I'm not in Florida or any place for like far south? It doesn't make any sense to me, but I don't mind it. Wait for it, wait for it. Ah, it sounds so good. And it's so smooth too. It's not like kirky jerky when you click. Oh, the little pops and everything. Oh, wait for it. We got some down shifts. Oh, that was smooth. Get a little closer. Oh, they sound so good when they downshift. All right, so you want to get into riding a bike. Well, there is going to be some hidden costs associated with riding a motorcycle. I keep forgetting about starting this video. I, I just am so obsessed with how minty the ships are. And I'm not talking about tickets and stuff because, you know, that's not really a hidden cost. It's just kind of a given. I mean, it's to be expected. Come on. Ugh. But on a serious note, the one of the main hidden costs on these bikes are insurance. Like that's like one of the main things that you gotta look out for first. Insurance on a motorcycle, just being completely straight up, is not cheap in any way, shape, or form. It's probably one of the biggest part of the budget of riding these things. Um, I do not have full coverage on my bike. 
and I'm still paying $1,900 a year for insurance. But when you get into the leader bikes and stuff like that, you can pay upwards of five, $600 a month just for insurance if you want to get good coverage. And you also got to pay attention for what size bike you're getting. So if you're watching this and you're trying to figure it out because you're getting into bikes and you haven't purchased a bike yet, I wouldn't be too concerned about insurance yet. Um, the, sl the smaller displacement bikes, they tend to be cheaper for insurance. So the higher displacement size you go from like 600, 750 to 1000, the more the insurance goes up. So when you buy these bikes, that is one of the main things you have to look out for is how much you pay for insurance. Oh, sounds so good. Um, but I looked at a ZX-10R and I called some insurance companies and so I got quoted like 630 bucks a month. A month. That's so stupid. That's cool. Meow. Ah, that sounds so good. Another big cost of riding bikes is gear. You could be like Chad and squid around and flip flop shorts and a t-shirt on a Jixxer 750, but you're also risking your life every time you go out 10 times more than if you have a proper helmet, proper jacket, proper pants, shoes, gloves, everything. And that shit adds up fast. Mind you, I'm gonna put a link to everything down in the description of what I have. My jacket, I believe it was $5.99 from Cycle Gear. It may be $4.99, but I think it was $5.99 this one. The gloves. I have several pairs of gloves because there's different times for different temperatures. Like these are my spring riding gloves. Perfect for this kind of weather where your hands aren't sweating and they're very protected. I have my summer gloves because trust me, wearing these gloves in the summer is not fun. They're so, they, your hands overheat so fast and it makes riding miserable. So that's why I have a pair of summer gloves, which are very comfortable in the summer, but don't provide as much protection. And then obviously I have the winter gloves which are my Alpine Stars, which I wear when it's like 50 degrees and below. Another thing to add on to gear is your helmet. I completely forgot about that. Helmets are not cheap either. There's one thing I don't skimp out on and it's helmets. You can skimp out a little bit on the gloves and get away with that maybe. Jacket, ah, uh, but helmet is an absolute Hell no, we're not skipping out on this for me. That's a personal thing. I don't know if everybody will agree with me on that. Look, my helmet is a AGV K1. Not the most expensive helmet in the world, but also not the cheapest. Helmets can range from anywhere from like a hundred bucks at a really cheap shitty helmet to something that's really expensive for like five, 600 bucks. So I got mine for like 200, I believe. I don't really remember. I got it a while ago, but I mean, if you need help picking a helmet out, I highly recommend the AGV K1. Uh, that's just a, a preference on my end. I like AGV stuff, and they provide a decent helmet. Um, but with that, there's also Chewy and all those other brands that are also really great. So just do your research before buying a helmet, but that's just another cost you've got to add in. And my riding pants were like 150 bucks they were riding jeans but they can get really expensive if you want like full protection riding pants can get expensive and then you get into riding shoes riding shoes are also very expensive um i picked mine up for like 200 bucks not the worst pair of riding shoes but not the best i end up just riding in sneakers because you know i'm a dumbass but if you want to protect your feet and protect your ankles i highly advise getting that um, people say that bikes are necessarily they're a lot cheaper they're not they really aren't. Yeah, one of the main costs associated with that kind of stuff is like gear. I mean, riding pants, like what, everything that I've gone over, my gloves, my jacket, that's like 700 bucks right there almost. And then you add in shoes, which are another 200 bucks. Now you're almost at what, 900 bucks? I don't know, I'm bad at math. Then you add in pants if you want to get riding pants that protect your legs. That's another like 200 bucks for a cheap pair. 150 bucks for a cheap pair. So now you're almost at $1,000 in just gear. So you gotta, you gotta account for that. Then you go over everything in total of the bike itself, which can vary. If you buy a cheap one, you can find them for like three grand for a cheap sport bike. Or you can get a newer one like this one right here and you could pay upwards of 11 grand. Uh, even for a starter bike, my, I think my first starter bike was like eight grand, which was not the cheapest starter bike, but at the same time, that one I wanted because it was a bigger bike and I wanted to start on something a little bigger, nothing crazy like this, but something at least I could like be comfortable with and not get bored on. 
not saying that 300s and stuff are boring for like everything but i have a problem with going fast like i have that speed addiction we just cut in front of this guy here if you want to start on a 600 that's your choice I don't think they're good starter bikes. They're a little fast, especially if you have zero riding experience. So just take that with a grain of salt and just be like, look, this is a little too big of a bike for me. I understand some people like myself had inflated egos when they got into riding. Oh, this is easy. Oh, this is that. It's fun. I want to go fast. Just think about how stupid you'd actually be. Think about that for a second before you make that decision. I forget who said it, but you can't go the faster you want to go, the more expensive it's going to be. That's the best advice I've ever heard, and that's the best advice I can ever give. Um, you get a 300cc uh, bike, insurance may not be that bad. Um, hello. That was a little close for comfort. Um, but yeah, like if you want to start on a 300, let's say. Yeah, they're great bikes, but they're not that fast. But you'll save a ton, and you'll get to enjoy riding. And I'm not trying to down on 300s not in any way i think they're great bikes i started on a 500 same same shit. they're just as fast just the, the reason 500s are seen as like a faster bike which i don't think they are um because people don't account for 500s way more and they like a ninja 400 i'm pretty sure is faster than the cbr 500 to my understanding at least like a Ninja 650 would be as big as I would go for a starter bike with zero riding experience. We yeah, had some fun on some dirt bikes growing up, like once or twice, still the same shit. No experience on street bikes, that kind of thing. Don't go bigger than a 650. Hello, biker person. There's something about it that just makes these things so addicting. They're literally the most addicting things on the planet. It's not even like the danger aspect or anything like that. It's literally just, they're fun. They're, they're freeing. Like I can weevil and wobble all I want. Like, ah, na, 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 na. like that's so fun. Like you don't even have to be going fast to have fun on these things. I mean, going fast is fun. Having that option is fun, but it's not the only thing that's fun about it. Oh, hello, Mr. Officer. door opener where is it aha uh -huh. <laughs> oh my god that thing is loud let's go <laughs> let's go upstairs oh i forgot to put this on i was wondering where my red sock went there we go organ donor <laughs> i'm a terrible person okay Alrighty guys, that is the end of today's video. If you made it this far, don't forget to drop a like, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to turn on post notifications. But anyways, I'll see you guys later. Peace. Thank you for joining me on Zach's ride today.